In this lecture, we are going to see an overview of software development lifecycle models. There are two learning objectives in this session, and in this lecture, we are going to address the first learning objective. Explain the relationships between software development activities and test activities in the software development lifecycle, which is marked as K2. Let's first establish a relationship between the development activities and the testing activities. For that, we need to know the characteristics of a good software development lifecycle model. When you have a new project, you will select a software development lifecycle model for it, according to the requirements of the project. Once you select the software development lifecycle model, you can add a few characteristics that would make it more suitable for your project. That is what we'll see here. Suppose you have a development model. For that model, you should have a test activity. That is why we say here that each development activity should have a test activity. And once you have a test activity, then each test activity must have objective, analysis, and design. What it means is, whenever you are performing tests, you need to have an objective. And in order to achieve that objective, you need an analysis and design stage. Since testing is not done in isolation, and the testers are deeply involved in testing activity, they should get an opportunity to participate in discussion and reviews. They should be part of meetings and allowed to put forward their ideas to the team. This is the basic characteristic of a good software development lifecycle model. Let's quickly go through the points. First, we select a development lifecycle model. Each development activity should have test activities. Each test activity should have objective, analysis, design, and testers should be part of the discussion and review. Next, we will cover three different types of software development lifecycle models. Waterfall model, V model, Agile model. Waterfall model and V model are referred to as a sequential model or incremental model, and the Agile model is referred to as an iterative model. For the explanation purpose, we will consider Waterfall model as a sequential model, V model as an incremental model, and Agile as an iterative model. Now, we are going to discuss the first software lifecycle model. That is the sequential development model. An example of a sequential model is the waterfall model. Here is the definition of the model. A sequential development model describes the software development process as a linear, sequential flow of activities. In this activity, the development model is defined as a linear or sequential flow of activities. Let's take a better look. The first activity in this model is the requirement activity. Over here, we analyze the requirement. Then, we'll go into the design phase where we will write the test condition and test case. And after that, we'll start building the software, which is the implementation stage of the process. When we've gone through all of these activities and our software is ready, then we go into testing. Here, we will test the software for defects, and if any are found, we will fix them. Once the software passes through testing, it will be released to the customer. These are the activities in the sequential model, and as you can see, they are in a linear flow. You have a requirement, design, build, testing, and release. But this type of model has a drawback. Until we finish the first three steps, we don't test the software we're building. We only test it once the software is ready. This is a big disadvantage of this model, and it is the reason we usually choose to work with other models. We will study next. Now, before concluding the topic, 
there are a few points we need to remember about the waterfall model. The first point is, any phase in the development process should begin when the previous phase is complete. Let's understand this point. We can start the second phase once the first is complete. Once requirement is completed, we can then start with design and so on. Now the second point. In theory, there is no overlap of phases, but in practice, it is beneficial to have early feedback from the following phases. Let's understand this point. As we've seen in the diagram, there is no overlap in the phases. Once the requirement is done, we start the design phase. Once the design phase is done, we start the build phase. Then test, then release. While the model does not allow any overlaps, in practice, it is better for the product to have some overlap between the phases. This point will explain in more detail while explaining the next model. And the final point. Test activities only occur after all other development activities have been completed. As we saw in the diagram, Testing only starts after the development activities are over. We don't have any early feedback process in this model. This is the big drawback of this model. And that is the reason we usually choose the V model or the Agile development model instead of this one. Now let's understand the second lifecycle development model. This one is called the incremental development model. The example of the incremental model is vModel. So as usual, first we get user requirements, which is provided by the customer. And from the user requirement, we write the system requirement. Once the system requirement is in place, we will write the global design and the detailed design. And once the design is done, we will then start implementing the software. All these activities are part of the development activity. Remember, the different development stages are user requirement, system requirement, global and detailed design and implementation. Now, once the implementation is over, the software is ready. Then we perform a component testing on it. Once that is done, we perform integration testing. After integration, we will do system testing and finally perform the acceptance testing. Once the software passes through all these tests, it will be ready for the operational system use. As you can see, this development model looks exactly like a V, which is where its name comes from. Now, how is this model more advantageous than the sequential model? The advantage is that all these testing activities are parallel to the development activities. Let's take a look. We now know these are the development activities and these are the testing activities. Once you have the user requirement, even if you have not done any of the below steps, you can start preparing test cases from the requirement for the acceptance testing. Similarly, when you are in the system requirement stage, you can start preparing for the system test. Since you have the requirements, you can start writing the test cases. Once the software comes, you can execute them. The process is happening parallelly. When the development activity starts, the testing activities can also start at the same time. Let's move on to the design phase. Once you have the design, you know how the components are going to interact. What are the interfaces between them? Once you know all that, you can start to prepare test cases for the integration testing. And finally, when you have the implemented code, you can start component testing. This is how this development model functions. All the development activities on the left correspond with the testing activities on the right. Here, you will start getting feedback as early as possible. Once you have the user requirement, testing will begin. This gives a tremendous advantage over the sequential model. Now, there are a few points to remember. 
The first, incremental development involves establishing requirements, designing, building, and testing systems in pieces, which means that the software's features grow incrementally. Let's understand this point. With the incremental model, you analyze and test the system in bits and pieces. Whereas with the sequential model, you analyze and test several stages at once. As an example, with the incremental model, if the customer says this month we need five features implemented, then you will read the requirements for only those five features. You will analyze and test those five features and implement them. Then, next month, you will take up another five new features to analyze and test. In one month, it gets five features, and in two months, it gets ten features. This is how the software grows incrementally by some features being added every month. The second point is the size of these features increments vary, with some methods having larger pieces and some smaller pieces. So, the size of the code you develop for your software at each increment depends upon the need of your project. The third point is, the feature increment can be as small as a single change to a user interface screen or a new query option. You won't be developing five features with every increment. You may be asked to do one new line of code or fix one small feature, but even for that, you will perform a complete testing activity. So, this is how your software will be built in increments. These are the points to remember. Now we will talk about the third software development lifecycle model, the iterative development model. The example of iterative is the Agile model. This is the most popular model in the industry right now. Once you finish this course, you can go for the Agile certification. Now suppose you have a software that you need to implement in three weeks, and it has 15 requirements. Let's see how we are going to use the Agile model to implement this. We can divide the development into three phases. Phase 1 is for the first week. Phase 2 is for the second week. And Phase 3 will show the third week. Since we have to complete the project in three weeks, the time has been divided in this way. Now, we have 15 requirements. So, we decide to develop 5 requirements in Phase 1, 5 in Phase 2, and 5 in Phase 3. At the end of three weeks, we will have 15 implemented requirements. Why are we doing this in phases? Because we analyze, test, and develop the first five requirements, then send it to the customer for feedback. If there are any changes to be made in the process, we find out about it in the first phase. Then, as per the feedback, we can implement that in phase two. This is the biggest advantage of the Agile method. You get the customer's feedback from the earliest stage, and in every stage, when you release the software to the customer, it will be fully working. So, at the end of phase one, you have five requirements in the working stage. But at the end of phase two, you won't be releasing just five requirements to the customer for feedback. You will be releasing 10 requirements in the working stage from phase 1 and 2. And at the end of phase 3, of course, you should have a complete working software that will fulfill all 15 requirements. This is how the Agile method works. Each phase has define, develop, build, test, and the implementation stage. We can see that Live implementation of the software will happen in all the phases. We are repeating the steps in each one, and this is why it is called an iterative development model. Let's go over a few key points that you should remember. Point 1 is iterative development, and it occurs when groups of features are specified 
designed, built, and tested together. So you will have some requirements that will be designed, built, and tested together in a series of cycles. As you saw, we tested the requirements repeatedly in one phase after another, often a fixed duration, like we had a fixed duration of one week for each phase. Point two is iterations may involve changes to features developed in earlier iterations, along with changes in project scope. Once you developed a feature in phase one, the customer gives feedback on it. If he does not like something, then you go to phase two, make the changes he wants in the phase one feature, as well as the next feature you're developing. So that way, you will have a change request as well as a new feature. Point three, each iteration delivers working software, which is a growing subset of overall set of features until the final software is delivered or development is stopped. What they're saying is when we had 15 total requirements, the five requirements we developed in phase one were the subset of the overall set of features. This process only ends when we deliver all 15 requirements in the working stage. Let's summarize the important points. First, we saw the characteristic of good software development model, where we have to select a development lifecycle model. Each development activity should have test activities. Each test activity should have objectives, analysis, and design. Also, testers should be part of discussion and review. After that, we covered three different software development models. The waterfall model, the V model, and the agile model.